got a nice ring to it. Jason Isringhausen, Cardinals Hall of Famer. We now ask Mr. DeWitt to step to the podium to read the inscription on Izzy's plaque. Mr. DeWitt. Jason Isringhausen, 2002 to 2008. No pitcher has saved more games in franchise history than Jason Isringhausen, who recorded 217 saves as the Cardinal closer. He ranks third all-time in strikeouts, 373 among Cardinals relievers, and has more seasons topping the team in saves, sixth than any other relief pitcher. Isringhausen set a then Cardinals record with 47 saves in 2004 to help the club win the NL pennant. His 401 appearances are the sixth most in team history um, among all pitchers. An NL All-Star in 2005, Izzy's dominance on the mound helped the club to four NL Central titles, two NL pennants, and one World Series championship. Jason Isringhausen. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the podium Cardinals Hall of Famer Jason Isringhausen. Okay, now the hard part. Uh, all right, I stand here in front of you guys like many have come before me. I am humbled, thankful, and in awe of this honor. To think that a kid from uh, Brighton, Illinois. <laughs> uh, I grew up there and I cheered for this organization to be standing in front of you and wearing this red jacket as the greatest day of my baseball life. <clears throat> I look over at these legends that are here today and you guys are still my heroes. Ozzy, Willie, Vince, and Whitey, you made this kid love baseball. <sighs> <laughs> and for that, I'm very thankful. Growing up less than an hour away, we all pretended that we were Ozzy, Willie, and Vince. Well, ex except for the speed. You know, man, you guys were fun to watch. You guys are my heroes. I grew up cheering for you, and you have surpassed what I thought it could be like to meet you. You represent a great era in Cardinals baseball and turned so many of us into fans. For that, I am forever indebted to you. <clears throat> the two Hall of Famers are not with us today, but they have had profound impact on my life. Red Shandies was more than a great baseball player. He was my friend. <clears throat> Red, I miss you, and every time I hunt or fish, I think of you. I know you're proud of this moment. Also, I'd like to extend my best wishes to Bob Gibson. <laughs> you never forget the first time that you shake that man's hand because you know in the presence of greatness. Bob, know that all of us are thinking of you today and we look forward, I look forward to wearing this red jacket with you on opening day 2020. To be here with you, to be part of this exclusive fraternity means everything to me. You all made me love this game. I love the St. Louis Cardinals. I didn't start playing this great game to be here this afternoon, and I wasn't sure what it would take me, but I am humbled to be here today and stand in front of you as a member of the St. Louis Baseball Cardinals Hall of Fame. There are countless people to thank in, the, in my journey to making it to this stage. I first want to congratulate my former teammate and the best fielding third baseman I've ever seen, and that's Scott Rowland. It's, 
It's an honor to be able to go into the Hall of Fame with you. Told you. Also, I would like to congratulate the late Mort Cooper and his induction into the Hall of Fame. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for a, a phone call that changed my life forever. That phone call came from Mr. DeWitt. For those that don't know that story, I had basically agreed to join the Texas Rangers when I was a free agent after the 2001 season. That day I went out to golf with a friend of mine and my phone rang and it was Mr. DeWitt. And he said to me, Izzy, what would it take for you or what would it take for me or you to come pitch for your hometown team? And little did he know that I would have paid him to come here and pitch. <laughs> Mr. DeWitt, to you, your family, thank you for making me a cardinal. Thank you, thank you for making my dream come true. <laughs> my road to this Cardinals Hall of Fame was not an easy one. 17 surgeries, three of which were Tommy John. That being said, I have to thank Dr. George Paletta and his staff for always putting Humpty Dumpty back together again. <laughs> the training staff of the Cardinals did an amazing job. My old friend Barry Weinberg made the trip up from Florida, so thank you for coming. It was all worth it. It was worth it because I got to experience putting on this Cardinals uniform. I got to wear the same uniform as Stan, Red, and Gibby, and the greats that are here today. I got to pitch for the greatest manager in baseball, my manager, Tony La Russa. <laughs> Tony, we won a lot of games together, and in my professional career, winning was what it was all about. And you made me a better pitcher, a better man, and thank you for that. One of my fondest memories of being a Cardinal was being able to close out the 2004 NLCS. That sent us back to the World Series for the first time since 1987. We don't get there without Jimmy Edmonds. Jimmy homered in Game 6, as we all know, and made the catch in Game 7. I got to see firsthand the catches of Jim Edmonds helping me save games throughout my career. Jimmy, you're the best defensive center field I've ever seen, and it's an honor to be part of this fraternity with you. I had a front row seat to see the greatness of Albert Pujols and Yadier Molina. And someday they too will be on this stage getting their red jackets. Yadi and Albert, Thank you for all the memories. I watched a guy named Chris Carpenter battle through games and through injuries to become a Cy Young Award winner. A Cardinals Hall of Famer and one of the best pitchers of our generation. Carp, for many of us, you led the way through your determination. It's great to be on this stage with you today. I got to sit in the bullpen and talk about the game among many other subjects with guys like Randy Flores, who's here today. Brad Thompson's here today. Julian Tavares, Cal Eldred, Tyler Johnson, Josh Kenny, Ray King, and the late Josh Hancock. Also, there was a young man that is still going strong today, and he's still got Uncle Charlie. That's Adam Wainwright. <laughs> Adam will be on this stage, hopefully not too soon. He's somebody I'm proud to call a teammate and a friend. 
My pitching coach in St. Louis was the best that has ever done it in the game of baseball, and that's Dave Duncan. Dunk was as old school as they get. He knew how to reach every single one of us. Dave can't be here today, but I want him to know that we are all thinking of him and his family and how much they all mean to all of us. Uh, to the guy that's emceeing this thing today and that has done it every year, Danny Mac. We as fans know how much you love the Cardinals and the city of St. Louis. I think probably people think that I pay him for the kind things that he says about me during the games. I get a lot of texts from all my friends and family saying Danny's at it again, trying to get you into the Hall of Fame. Well, Danny, it worked. Thank you. It was a phone call from Mr. DeWitt that brought me to St. Louis. But it was the front office that made sure that happened. Walt Jockety and John Mozalak. Thank you for bringing me home. Walt, you're a big reason why we have the excitement across the street in that ballpark. You got this franchise going again. I will miss all of our late night strategy sessions over a few beverages after home or road games. Always water, nothing more than that. Mo, you have carried the torch and this organization continues to win and win a lot. You become a friend and a golfing buddy. But no, I'm still never gonna let the boss win. Also, Mo, thank you for my opportunity to continue my journey in baseball by working for the club and working with our minor leaguers. It's not quite the same as closing games out, but it's exciting to know that you're helping young people and this organization reach new heights. Thank you. In that role with the club, I work with so many people that don't get enough credit for what they do. And that's Gary The Rock, our director of player development and the entire minor league coaching staff. You all put in so much work and put up with so much of me, but you make this a winning organization. Thank you. When you're a closer, it's pretty simple. When you get the save, you've done your job. When you blow the save, you're the GOAT. And you know, it's, it may surprise you, but I did blow a few games. And I'm sure I'm responsible for some of the gray hairs in this room today. You're supposed to shake it off and go get them the next day. And that all sounds great, but when you blow a save, it eats at you. It bothers you. There are sleepless nights. While, you're, while the closer gets to deal with the heartache, so do your loved ones, mom and dad and your wife, your family and friends. My support system through the good and the bad times was always there, and they're all here today. Now the tough part. <laughs> Dad, back in 1992 when I was drafted, when I left home for the first time, you said to me, I just go have fun for a year or two. When you get back, when you get done with this, you can come work at the refinery for me. <laughs> now you're also the guy that said that Barry Sanders was too small to ever play in the NFL. <laughs> well, your skills at evaluating talent may be something to be desired. But your love and support of me was always the best. You never missed the games, the practices, and you were always there for me. And you'll never know how much that has meant to me. You've taught me so many things in my life, and the phone calls that I still call you today mean so much. So thank you, and I love you. In sports, you're told you have to be a, a tough SOB. You have to play through the injuries. My mom is here today, and she's been under the weather a little bit. But mom, you're the definition of being tough. You've always been the backbone of this family. You were there in Little League to dry these tears. You spent much of your life driving me to practices and games and made sure that I always knew that you loved me. Mom, you're tough, and you have been an inspiration to me, and I love you so much. 
Thank you. Now to my real boss, my wife, Lori. I'm like, wow, it's been a wild ride. Thank you for raising our children and being a single mother for all those years. From day one, you've been the backbone of this family. I can never say thank you. Enough for getting me through the tough times. You were always there to give me a kick where I needed it. You were always there when I was down, the injuries, the wins, and the losses. You never really complained. Not too much. You've made this day possible because of your undenying loyalty to me and our family. Thank you, and I love you. My two daughters are here today. Madeline, who is 17, God help me. And Emerson, who is 10. There was no save or baseball moment that can ever match the day you two came to my life. I treasure both of you, and I'm so proud of both of you. You both have made me a better person, and there isn't a moment that goes by that I don't think of you both. I love you girls so much. <laughs> Finally, to the best fans in baseball, to the fans of the St. Louis Cardinals, I want you to know that you are truly the best fans in the game. There's nothing like that feeling when the bullpen door opens and 40,000 people are on their feet cheering and maybe sometimes booing. It happens. It comes with the job. <laughs> it was amazing then, and you guys still never disappoint today. Like you, I'm a fan of this great organization. I love the Cardinals. The birds on the bat mean more than just baseball. To me, it means winning. And we've won a lot here. It's a lot of fun. It has meant history. It has meant going to Bush Stadium when I was a kid, cheering on for all my heroes. It's meant Clydesdales and backflips. It's meant traditions being handed down from generation to generation. The birds on the bat meant I was home. And that's what I feel today. I'm home. Being here among all of you, it's home. Thank you very much. It's, it's been a wild ride, and I just want to thank everybody so much for being here. Thank you.